on stained glass windows. And everybody thinks about, talks about, has heard about stained glass windows. But what do you really think about when you talk about a stained glass, a big church window or a synagogue window? Uh, remember the ones you got dragged through when you went to Europe, all those big churches and the beautiful synagogue windows we have all over? Um, or all the way down to a small little sun catcher that we often make um, and hang in our kitchen windows. And then everything in between, like the one that I have here, which I made for my stained glass studio. So stained glass is a lot of things, big and small. Okay. We really need it, our government and people. Uh, uh, the specialness of stained glass is the fact that it's a media that plays with light. And it's the changes of light and the colors of light that make it something really special. Stained glass has a depth and a fragileness that no other media can bring to it. And that's why we really respond to it as human beings. Let me tell you a short history about stained glass. Did you know that the first use of glass was in ancient Egypt? They learned how to melt and grains into glass and they added copper and cobalt or gold to make different colors. The Egyptians made glass beads and letter glass goblets and bottles, but they never learned how to roll it out into flat panes that we see, think of as window glass and that we use for stained glass. The, use, the people who learned how to do the windows, the flat panes of glass came in the middle ages and the monks and the artisans of the Europe learned how to take the glass making from Egypt and to, when the glass was molten, to drop it onto a flat surface and let it go flat into a pane of glass. And then they started the one, they're the ones who thought of using those panes of glass to fill windows, to keep the weather and the light in and the beauty of it. And they learned how to color it. They learned that if you put different minerals into the glass when it was melted, you would get different colors. And then you, the best view of that is, of course, the big cathedral windows throughout Middle, Middle Europe during the Middle Ages. During Europe during the Middle Ages, got that. Um, so that's where stained glass, as we know it, as a, what we're doing, what I'm talking about today, got started. And did you know that glass making was the first industry to set up in the Americas in Jamestown, settled in 1607? John Smith, remember reading him in their history books? Captain John Smith in his writings described successful glassmaking venture. He made bottles and he made window glass for the colonists. So right back then we started with this. Modern stained glass techniques have evolved of course over the years. And the techniques that the hobbyists use were developed mostly by Louis Tiffany in the 1800s. And you've heard of the Tiffany lamps and the Tiffany uh, glass that's very famous. I use the Tiffany techniques. Uh, this one is the Tiffany technique and I'll show you, that's what I'm gonna to demonstrate today. So sometimes I get a misconception that stained glass means that I took window glass and stained it or colored it. And I don't do that. Um, I don't put dye in glass. I buy the glass already made with the dye in it. The glass is made in a glass factory in great big kilns, which I, have, of course, can't do. And the color comes from um, the oxides that you put in there. And I'm not going to go into a chemistry lesson on which oxides turn glass, which colors. But suffice it to say, when you melt the glass and put in the different oxides, and then you roll it out on, nowadays, they actually roll it out on mercury, liquid mercury, to get it nice and flat and smooth. And then the glass cools on that surface and you get um, a, a sheet of glass. So they've gotten good at making different kinds of glass. And what I'm gonna to try to do now is demonstrate different kinds of glass. I'm gonna take my camera here. I hope I don't get anybody dizzy. And I'm gonna show you that I have in my glass studio, lots and lots of panes of glass in a cupboard. 
And I'm gonna take some out and show you the different kinds of glass. The first time I'll, kind I will talk about is opalescent glass. This is glass that is heavily infused with color and comes out to different colors. Here's a piece of red glass. And I have a piece of yellow glass. Can you see that okay? And you can try a piece of blue glass. They come with all the different colors and you can't see through them. If I hold this up, you can't see what's behind it. This is opalescent glass, heavily stained. All the colors of the rainbow. We've got some green. Now, another kind of glass, which we're more used to, is what we call cathedral glass or transparent glass. And that glass comes so you can see through it. This is red, but you can see what's behind it. This one's a very light tinted aqua blue. And you notice a little bumps on it. Besides having, you can put texture into your glass. They do that as it rolls out when it is hot. Now, you've got, those are your two basic types of glass, the ones you can see through and the ones you can't. But then they got creative and they took glass and they made it half and half. So you got what you call streaky glass. And whoops, where am I? There I am. You can see through some sections of this glass and not others. You can see the white, you can see the pink. There's two colors in here. There's pink, oh, there's pink and there's white and there's sections where you can actually see my hand through it. So those are the types of glass. And then there's one other, which is your clear glass, like having a window, a regular old fashioned window that you can look through. And this one is just plain clear glass, but it has what we call water glass because it looks very liquidy. You can see it shimmer and flow. And so you could have a window with just plain clear glass of different kinds. Here's a little piece that has a, a so, let's come back to me here. Oh, oh, here we are. So you can have all different kinds of glass and I buy them at the glass store. There used to be a really nice one in Glendale and it went and closed. So then I had to go all the way to Mesa to buy my glass now, but there it is. Um, say you wanna buy, say you wanna make a window. The first thing you have to do is choose a pattern. What do you want your window to look like? In the Frank Lloyd Wright windows, which are little squares of mostly uh, cathedral glass, you can see through them. They're brightly colored squares of glass you can see through. Or you can do a window like mine, which is I put it up there because the sun kept coming through and blinding me in my eyes when I was working in my studio. So that one's all cathedral glass, which you can't see through. And you have to decide what picture you want. I have lots and lots of patterns. Judaica stained glass patterns, right here. Bought it in the store. And I got all kinds of different um, patterns, pictures of things you might want to make into a window. I have, here's your um, Frank Lloyd Wright windows. And we have Southwest. West. Lots of people like Southwest. All kinds of things, patterns of pictures of glass thing you can make. So for today, I decided that I would make a Judaica 
stained glass window and I found a little picture of a Star of David. And I traced it out of the book. And I'm gonna show you how to make a Star of David. So what you first have to do is after you've traced out your, what you decide what you wanna do, you have to make a full size pattern. What size do you want it? So here I decided I'll make one this big. And you're gonna see it all finished by the end of this lesson or Zoom or whatever you wanna call this. Once I've made my pattern, I have to cut out my pattern pieces. And I cut those, trace those on, and I cut out strips. This strip goes strips of pattern to put on my pattern here. I got this thing right there it is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a very good cameraman. So I've got pieces of paper that are gonna be my pieces of glass because gla glass is expensive. I'm not gonna fool around cutting glass unless I know exactly the size and shape I want it. So I will put, make all of my glass strips the size and shape I want it from my pattern. Okay. All right, so I've got my pieces of the Star of David and I gotta decide what color I want it. How about we make it blue? So I'm gonna take my blue glass. This glass is very pretty. It's a cathedral, you can see through it. Uh, there you go. Yeah, see my hand through it? Uh, but it's got uh, ripples on it. You can see the, the light catching the ripples. So it's a very pretty piece of glass. My pattern piece and I put it on my glass and I take a pen And I'm going to trace it. Where am I? There I am. And I have my pattern piece on my piece of glass. There it is. You see it? And now I'm going to cut it out. So in order to do that, we got to come over here to my cutting board. So we got to move the camera, everybody. Let's go for a ride here. There, see my cutting board? And I'm going to cut glass. You hear that noise? That's, I just made a score. You make a score on glass with a glass cutter. It's a diamond head and diamond makes a line on glass. And wherever you made that line, it's going to break. I used a piece of scrap glass to make a line. I didn't use my good blue glass. And I'm going to use my breaker and I snap it and I have two pieces of glass. Where am I? There I am. Learn how to cut glass and you learn how to do, you cut out all your pieces. And in the end, here's the piece, just the one I showed you before that matches my pattern piece. Where am I? There I am, I cut it out and I have a piece of glass. And I cut them all out, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And then I put them together. I lay them out on my pattern. Where they fit. Here. And I 
do that until I have all my pieces together. Then, whoops, where am I? There I am. Then, after you cut out all your pieces of glass, you have to figure out how you're going to put them together. Well, in the olden days, they put glass together with lead cane. And I forgot to get out a piece of cane. Here's a piece of cane. There we go. Lead cane. They could work lead back in the day. It was an easily malleable metal and you take your piece of glass and it fits, they make a channel in it and it fits like that in your channel. And you put each piece together in each channel and build it, build it, build it, build it until you have a window. Well, I said I was gonna use the Tiffany technique and Tiffany, lead is heavy. So Tiffany had a different technique where you could put it together using copper foil, powder. And that's what I use because it's a lot easier and a lot lighter and you can make more intricate cuts. And I'm losing my head here. There we go. So I'm gonna take my piece of glass and I'm gonna put foil around it. And this is my foil. Oh, by the way, if you're not a very good cutter and if your glass is all very, very sharp, you can grind it. We have a glass that people use. That's my glass grinder. That's the sound of grinding glass. But I'm not here to show you all these things to do. Just the simple techniques of getting it done. So I have bought at the store. It's copper foil and it Peel, it's like tape peeling off the back of a, and you put the foil is, oops, gotta stay in the camera. And you have a piece of glass that's got little metal foil around it. And the reason you do that is because the solder will stick to the foil and not the glass. And then you put it all together. And here's where the magic comes in. I put all those pieces together and laid them out. And there is my star. They're all foiled. See the foil lines? And here's my piece of piece of glass. See that each piece of glass is separate. There it is. I chose to use this with some vertical lines in it for my background. And I put it, there I am, put it right there. And now we have to put it together because otherwise it's just a whole bunch of individual pieces of glass. And that's where you solder it. This, where am I? Here's my soldering iron. Whoop, let's get this back here. Sorry about the camera. There we go. Do we almost have it right? There. Okay, now you got it, right? I got a soldering iron. And I have solder. Solder is lead and tin, 60-40. And it costs $15 for one pound of solder. It isn't cheap.
Now, solder doesn't stick unless you put in flux, which is a catalyst. So I'm just going to put some flux in here, which is my catalyst. And I'm just going to run a bead of solder. Okay, enough of that. So after you solder the whole thing, then you can pick it up and see what you've done. Obviously I soldered the others previous to this and that's what you get. You get a stained glass window. Whoa, there it is. And I will frame this and I'll put it on a chain. And we have a very pretty little window with a star. And I will bring it to the temple gift shop and somebody can buy it. And there'll be a donation to the temple. So there we are back again. So that was a very quick, very um, unprofessional <laughs> demonstration of putting together a stained glass window. Um, do you have any questions? If there are any questions, people can just unmute themselves and, and feel free. I was told to do a 20 minute presentation and I think I came in on the money. Yeah, Judy, explain how you um, install a window, a stained glass window over a regular window for decorative use. Ah, okay. If you want a window in your house, and I do commissions, and um, by the way, I, I worked in a professional glass studio up in the Chicago area for many, many years. Didn't give up my day, day joint. <laughs> There's no money in it. But um, what you do is, what I do is I go work with the client on what kind of window they want, what their color patterns are, what kind of glass they want, um, whether they want to block the light or let the light in, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then we decide on the window. And as Ann said, when it's all done, I install it in front of the window they already have in their house. I'm not taking out the windows of not a carpenter. And it's installed with some clips that if you ever want to change it or remove it, you just take the clips off and take the window out. So it adds beauty to the house. You never know that the regular pane is behind it, but that's a good thing for the weather and for insulation. Uh, yes? I have a question. You roll uh, the material out over mercury. I understood that mercury was poisonous. You also deal in lead and tin. Does that take uh, the um, a, a lead uh, to make the lead less uh, dangerous? Because we know that small children who lived in homes with a lot of lead developed uh, different illnesses. How do you protect yourself? You are absolutely right. In the studio that I worked with, he read the riot act about being careful of dangerous chemicals. And as far as the lead content, um, they don't usually do glass with children because of the lead. When you solder, there is lead in the air and you can wear a mask if you're so inclined you can um, protect yourself, but like most people, I figure I'm, I'm already grown and I'm not gonna have it. So I go for it and I breathe in some lead and I'm still here to tell the tale. Um, if, I did it 20, if I did it for a real job, nine hours a day, every day of the week, yeah, I'd wear a mask and I'd wear protective gear. But as a hobbyist, I, I don't think I'm getting lethal doses, but you're right, there is lead involved. 
uh, in the solder. And as far as the making of the glass, the glass factories, I don't know what they figure out, but they have it all done. I have a question, Judy. Uh -huh. Your work is beautiful. What drew you to being interested in stained glass and how long have you been an artist creating work with stained glass? Okay, well, it all started when I was in my 30s and I was working at a nursing home and my friend there said, uh, let's go to a stained glass class after work one day. So we did and we took to it and um, the teacher of that stained glass class, which was at a community college, had a stained glass studio. And three or four of the students in that class, we formed a very tight knit friendship group. And he invited us to work in, in, in the evenings. And we ended up on a Thursday night. That was our night for this group. And for years and years and years and years, this group met every Thursday night in the studio. We did, uh, we learned and we grew and we used, we did help the studio, the owner of the studio do uh, his commission work and we did our own work and we ate dinner together and I've uh, been doing it since, since the 1980s. That's wonderful, thank you. And when the studio finally closed, it was a year after I'd moved here and another gal had moved to Seattle, we all flew into Chicago and had a great big party. Oh. Well, I really enjoy looking at your the things that you've shared so far. Yeah, yeah the Jewish star that you made, was that on a flat piece of glass or all the clear pieces that were pieced in in between the blue? I, I sorry, what'd you say? Uh, what what was the question? Is is the the, the Jewish star pattern on top of a flat piece of glass? No, no, the glass. They're, they're side by side and they're and they're soldered together. Okay, all right, that's right. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it, it looks funny on camera. I'm, I'm not a very good with the camera thing. No, I got it. I, I'm a live person. I'm a hands-on live person. I'm not doing well with this uh, Zoom thing. I got it. Any additional questions? Please feel free to unmute. Judy, what's Anne? the biggest piece you ever did? Uh, very big. Uh, it was uh, six feet by four feet. It was for my brother's, uh, you know, the glass brick windows behind the bathtubs, those great big glass brick windows they put in these houses. I did one like that and it was, I can't do it. I can put in my car to take it to the client. So I had whatever fits in the back of an SUV is what I do. What was it? Uh, fishes. Uh, it was like an aquarium. It was above the bathtub and it was all these little fishes swimming with the, the flora and the fauna and it was very nice. Any other questions? Yeah, I have, I have a, uh, something. Uh, Go um, ahead, but, please. I just want to say, Judy, uh, when I took a walk with Joyce in the biblical garden, we were just just in awe of your beautiful creations that you added to the beauty of the biblical garden. It's just stunning. And I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, it's, it's just marvelous. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, that um, I was asked during the uh, beginning, the first initial lockdown when nobody could go anywhere. And she said, why don't you make some stepping stones for the biblical garden? And I was glad to have a project to do. So yes, thank you. I'll have to go look at that. I, oh, I yeah. certainly second that. I, I see them often as I often go through the biblical garden. I, I second what the cancer said. Ray, I believe you had a question. Yes. I was trying to find a small glass uh, menorah that I have. It was made by a neighbor of mine, and I cherish it. And every uh, Hanukkah, I take it up, and it has a magnet, and I put it on a, a, a lovely mirror that I have from my mom's home. And I have that beautiful little menorah as a, an emblem of an old friendship. It's just lovely something like that. Yes. 
Judy, I want to thank you for coming forward and, and doing a wonderful presentation. Yes. Uh, Stain Glass and, and your creativity and expertise. Is, uh, it shows, it shows uh, everybody what can be done with uh, glass and uh, 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 your talent. Again, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Andre and Dave for, for writing, for co hosting this presentation. And like I said, next month we're going to have. Two more presentations. Bonnie Longmire is going to do a presentation. Uh, I believe it's March 9th on uh, healthy eating. And uh, Russ Robbins is going to do a presentation on uh, the March 30th on easy Photoshop and uh, photo processing. So looking forward to those two from, from Bonnie and Russ. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and supporting uh, the temple and Judy. Uh, uh, this has really been a, a wonderful presentation. That Thank I you. No, I had no idea what it took to, to look forward to seeing this in the gift shop at the temple. I'll finish it off, put the uh, uh, border on it, and uh, put a hanging thing on it. And here you have it. It's oh, beautiful. You. That's beautiful. It really is. Yeah, just beautiful. Anybody else have anything to add? Uh, Say, yes, uh, I'd like to add. I'd like to. Be. Yeah, I've been to Judy's house many times and have seen the stained glass. But Judy, your explanation today really helped me to understand what you do. So thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. You're welcome. And Judy, you make it look so easy the way <laughs> that you in it. And I know it's not. It takes a real gift to be able to do that. Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. Thank you, Judy. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. We'll see everyone later. And if you want to re watch this, it'll be part of the bulletin on Wednesday. Judy, thank Great. you again. Wonderful job today. You're welcome. Job. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Judy. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I want to clap for you, Judy. It was wonderful. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Very good.